first down, they hand off to Marlon Mack. Huge hole, 50-yard line. He's at the 40, still going near sideline. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Marlon Mack. Touchdown, I-N-D-Y. And again, it's picked off. It's Darius Leonard. Leonard with a second INT, and he's streaking down the near sideline. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. He's going to go. A pick six for the Maniac. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice Colts podcast. Today, we're going to be doing our recap of the Colts and Titans rematch and where the Titans won in dominating fashion, winning 45-26 to 26 over Indianapolis, now taking sole possession of first place in the division so far. Uh, there's a lot to discuss here, Cody. I mean, we'll kind of sum it up in a nutshell here. But a couple things real quick before we get started. First things first, we are doing a giveaway. So be sure to check that out on Twitter. Uh, we have we are giving away a Colts uh, throwback hat. So make sure to check that out on our social media posts and be sure to enter into that giveaway. That should be a lot of fun. Maybe we'll have another one before the end of the year is up as well because, you know, it's about to be December. Uh, it's a lot of uh, great stuff uh, happening, you know, in the Christmas spirit. Speaking of which, Cody, is it snowing in Indiana right now? It is, yeah. Very light snow, but – it's snowing. It's been snowing pretty much the whole day. So, uh, hoping the roads aren't too bad. I still got to drive home after this. But uh, yeah, right now it's, it's a little bit of snow outside. It's been pretty steady, I would say today. Yeah, it's it's Inter- been it's been that way today too. It's just been snowing all day and hasn't been sticking at all because yesterday it was mm-hmm. it was like almost sixty here yesterday. But um, yeah, it's none of it sticking. But it has been snowing all day, so it's great to see that finally happening but um also guys just wanted another quick uh video be sure to check out cody's video he uploaded just a little bit ago about uh, uh about sanchez our punter uh rigo apparently has a cancerous tumor that the doctors found just the other day and they are looking to have a surgery on him here on tuesday of this week uh, Colts believe that they caught it early enough that it wasn't going to spread very far. So thankful for that. Uh, Sanchez will have the surgery and hopefully, you know, have a couple months where he's just going to have to recover and uh, they'll have to check his status. But it's all looking good, though. So thankfully he was able to deal with that because that's something that's bigger than football, like you said in the video, Cody. It's more just about human human interaction there. You know, it's more than football. It's about the life of somebody and it reminds you again like when we're talking about you know everything going on in the world right now cancer is kind of one of those uh kind of one of those deadly things that we haven't we don't talk about a whole lot right now as a country even though cancer is killing a lot of people still in today's society and goes to show you even a healthy mid-20s uh, late 20s guy like uh like Rigo you know it still can get at you at any time so you know, it's something that you got to be careful of, but be sure to yeah. check that video out, guys. But anyway, let's get into this uh, recap here. Cody, I mean, this can kind of get brought up into a nutshell here of, you know, it just felt like, it just felt like a day where, you know, the Colts just didn't have it. And, you know, we've seen a couple games of that with Frank Reich. We've seen a couple games of it with Chuck Pagano, the former head coach. It's kind of just been a thing of the NFL where there's some games where, you know, you just sometimes don't show up to play. And whatever you – and not to make it seem like they didn't come out trying to win. It's just a sense of, you know, whatever you try to do sometimes just isn't good enough and sometimes it's just not going to work. I mean, did it feel that way for you or is that just me? Yeah, it did feel that way. I mean, it just felt like everything you tried, you just had no luck on um, the whole day. Like, you know, the, the Titans come out and they just slice right through your defense right away. Uh, and, you know, we talk, we'll talk about it, I'm sure. But, you know, it's just like you literally got, like, no stops against this running game. Like, it was bad. Like, and I don't know if it's a lack of effort. I don't think it's a lack of effort. I think it's just a lack of execution, execution right? That's mm-hmm. what Frank Reichen said. 
um, he just was like, we just did not execute at all. And that's just what I felt like it was like the whole day. Like it was just like Titans knew the Colts weaknesses um, with all those guys going out um, due to COVID and injuries and all that stuff. And the Titans do, knew exactly what they needed to do. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw Kevin Bowen posted a tweet about Matt Eberflus was on like his like uh, goals for the defense. Number one was stop the run. And so like they knew they needed to do that. <laughs> Yeah, they just couldn't, you know, it just was one of those games where nothing went right. And, you know, I tweeted out uh, whenever AJ Brown, they tried that onside kick, AJ Brown takes it back for a touchdown. I was like, that's just fitting for today. Just like literally nothing can go right. Nothing. And so, um, you know, we can blame it on injuries all we want, which they, that is a factor for sure. Um, but like you said, you know, sometimes there's just games where you just don't have it for some reason. Like we were talking off air about the Raiders yesterday, you know, the Raiders are, are a team that, went toe to toe with Kansas city a couple of weeks ago, they beat them earlier on in the regular season. So we know they have talent and they dropped three points. Like it happens sometimes in the NFL. Um, and also the Colts lost Anthony Costanzo, their left tackle MCL sprain. Well, worth monitoring. Frank Greg said it's too early right now to see uh, exactly what timetable that is, but looks like hopefully Costanzo will return. Hopefully maybe in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, that would probably definitely about, make- maybe two to three weeks because normally an MCL sprain on average in the NFL keeps somebody out around two weeks. Uh, that would probably be my guess. Yeah. So you throw out DeForest Buckner, all pro, Danico Watcher, your leading sacker, Bobby Okariki, uh, one of your top two linebackers. Uh, who else? Rocky Sin probably had the worst day of his career. Rocky Sin had maybe the worst day outside of that Denver game against Cortland Sutton. That's about it. Had the worst one there. And then, yeah. you know, you, like you said, the defense line couldn't do much. And then you lose Anthony Costanzo in the middle of the game. You are already were down Ryan Kelly, your center. I mean, it, the injuries, like not, not only the ones that, you know, we knew of going into this game, but then the ones that accumulated throughout the game on and on and on. It's like, my yeah. God, can we just stop this, please? Yeah, and Jonathan Taylor going out because of COVID, and then Jordan Wilkins getting hurt throughout the game. So at one point, Derek, you had one healthy running back. One healthy running back the whole time. Uh, in that game. So, uh, and then Kari Willis got hurt in that game. Like, all these guys kept getting hurt in this game. And it's like, you know what, we can try as much as we want, but when you lose players of that caliber, some of your core pieces, this stuff's bound to happen. And, like, you know, I don't want to put an excuse on that. I mean, that is an excuse, like, for in one hand. But also, you got trounced by the Titans in the first half. Oh, yeah. Like, they scored 35 points on you. That is completely unacceptable. Like, I don't care if you have your practice squad defensive linemen. Like, that is unacceptable against this team. Like, we know what the Titans are going to do. We know they're <laughs> they're going to run it. Like, you know yeah. what they're going to do. And you just flat out could not stop them the entire game. Um, it was just really odd. And, and just one of those games is just like, sometimes you, like you said, you just have those games where you're just like, what did we, what was that? <laughs> you know, that, that wasn't us. We know that we know we're a good team. Yeah. A week ago, we just beat probably one of the best teams in the NFC. Mm-hmm. So it happens and people are really overreacting. I'm just going to say that now. Yeah. Like I've never wanted to punch so many people through my phone <laughs> yesterday, but seriously, people were yeah. overreacting. They're like, we're not going to win that. We're not going to win any more games. We should fire everybody. We, we should trade Rocky Sin. We should Phillip Rivers is the worst thing in the world. Like, like, and, and yeah. to be honest, like I, I understand benching Rocky Sin for that game. He was not performing well and his, his emotions were getting to him to where he wasn't going to do better uh, in that state of mind. So of course you had to make a change, but then like, that then that that touch that near touchdown by AJ Brown where he ended up catching that fourth and like twelve all the way down the field before halftime, like and then I was saying, oh, is that Rocky Sin's fault? Is that Rocky Sin's fault? No, I think TJ Carey was the one guarding him. So like you know, it, it was one of those days where like again, people are so over dramatic about Rocky Sin. It's unbelievable. Like, I understand the dude is young, and I understand that, like, he's having bad games. But, my goodness, you would think that this guy was a veteran, and they're trying to tell the Colt, uh, the Colts to get rid of this guy because he's, like, past his prime. This guy's not even at his prime yet. That's the sad part. Right. I mean, if, if the Colts would listen to some people, 
their roster would look a lot different. Oh, it'd <laughs> I mean, be a whole heck of a lot. People different. already had said trade Jonathan Taylor earlier in the season. We saw that, right? Yep. Uh, people were saying bench Phillip Rivers. Well, we saw what happened when Jacoby Brissett came in. He did nothing. So, like, uh, and Rivers had a, not a great day either. Like, it wasn't, like, bad statistically, at least from a touchdown interception ratio, and he had some yards, but – he just – it wasn't great from a completion percentage standpoint. Well, also, uh, how many drops did the receivers have in that game? I yeah. Mean, there, I, were, I didn't there were – there were – this is the first game this year. I think this might be the first game this year where I collectively said, what is going on with our wide receivers? I mean, hmm. we know – we know T.Y. Hilton had a couple drops early in the year, but, like – Zach Pascal was dropping passes. Michael Pittman was dropping passes. It seemed yesterday that T.Y. Hilton was the only one not dropping passes. I mean, yeah. that's the crazy part. And Trey Burton had himself some good plays. You know, I mean, let, let, before we get – I want to get one more thing here for uh, defensive-wise. Like, why – I mean, such a bad performance. I mean, you're right. The, the, the difference in the talent when it comes to – your defense. Like I know injuries happen. I get it. And it is next man up. That's the mentality that you do want. But when you look at the difference in talent from that first string to when it is for second string, especially when you're talking about a guy into Forrest Buckner, you see the difference, but you're right. It was also a, a great lack of execution by this defensive line, not hitting the gaps very well. And because of that, the linemen were getting up to the linebackers, so the linebackers couldn't fill gaps properly. So Derrick Henry had everywhere to run. I mean, it was just as simple as that. I'm not yep. going to sit here and say that I don't believe that they didn't give 100% effort because I firmly believe that they did. That's the reason why so many guys yesterday were visibly upset on the field. I get it because they were trying, and the Titans were just laughing in their faces as if they didn't just get their asses kicked two weeks ago by the same team in their own building. But it's fine because they can be as cocky as they want to when you know half of this roster is this – starting roster is gone they can laugh all they want to but ultimately again it was a lack of execution and you know uh, and Darius Leonard admitted that afterwards and you know he wasn't happy about it and I, I imagine so I mean this team's gonna get better and you know wasn't a great performance really by everyone but I mean let's kind of go away from the negative here let's try to shift to a positive is there any kind of positives that we could take away from this game. I mean, one, a couple things that I noticed, obviously I mentioned before, no, no lack of effort from the, from start to finish. I saw a couple guys really keep going a hundred percent of the time. I mean, Darius Leonard was one of them in that second half, despite being down three touchdowns or by 24 points, that man did not slow down. He was still making plays on blitzes, on every tackle he could get, he was still bringing energy because he was not looking at that scoreboard. He was just trying to get his team back. So I liked that. I felt that there were some guys that were still trying. And I think, you know, it, it, it was incredible to see, you know, T.Y. Hilton getting some uh, back into a little bit of a rhythm there. Had four catches for 81 yards and a touchdown in that game. You know, he had a very solid game. I mean, you know that catch, uh, that's actually the first catch that he's made beyond 35 yards uh, since the 2018 wildcard game uh, with, with Andrew Luck, which wow. it's, it's been a while since uh, T.Y. Hilton's caught a ball that deep before. And yeah. even so, that ball was still short. Um, you know, Trey Burton had himself a good game. You know, Burton uh, early in the game was doing very well. And – you know, I, I thought that there were some pieces that were, you know, had some decent performances and, you know, the effort was still there, but can you give me like any other positives potentially that you saw? Yeah, I can. Um, and let me, let me start here first, first half on, on defense, atrocious, 35 points allowed, unacceptable. Second half, you know, you allowed three points on defense. So your second half defense again was stellar. Uh, it's just weird how that continues to happen. In the first half, it's like you get slaughtered in the first half. Second half is good, but if you're allowing 35 points, like, yeah, it's not going to work. Um, but I guess, you know, going away from the negatives, the positives were you held them in check really well. I mean, Derrick Henry had 
135 yards in the first half or something around that. He finished with 178. So you really slowed him down. He didn't reach the end zone in the second half. Um, I really felt like he did a pretty good job there containing him. Um, you mentioned T.Y. Hilton. Naheem Hines continues to be a threat out of the backfield. He had eight catches on 10 targets. So he was the leading target um, and a leading receiver as well in terms of receptions. Um, so I like that from him. Uh, you mentioned Trey Burton. I thought he, he had another really nice day. Um, yeah, and I mean, overall, you know, the defense, it was, it was a struggle for sure. Uh, and I know we talked about a little bit earlier about uh, Rigo obviously going to be out for a while. But I thought Rodrigo Blankenship did a pretty good job on the kickoffs. Um, that was something he just kind of had to do last minute, mm -hmm. I feel like. Um, and I thought, all things considered, he did a pretty solid job doing that. Um, so I guess, you know, there's not a ton, a ton of positives. But I think if I had to do that, because obviously Rodrigo Blankenship didn't kick any field goals. He was two for two for extra points. So that's good. Uh, overall, though, yeah, I think the second half was my biggest positive takeaway on defense. Um, if only your offense would have helped you out, maybe it would have been a more competitive game because your offense scored zero points in the third quarter and 12 points in the fourth quarter. Uh, so, in, and Derek, also, something we didn't mention, uh, the Colts went for two twice and they were 0 for 2. Um, so you think about that. Before A.J. Brown returns that onside kick for a touchdown, um, if you made those two two-point conversions – that's four more points, and that game's a lot closer. I mean, you, you were at, you're at 30 at that point. Uh, so that game could have been completely changed if some of those things would have gone right. Yeah. Um, and I really believe uh, – you, you know, it wasn't a completion point. The end was pretty bad, but the pass protection was also pretty good for Rivers. Only sacked once in that game. He knew, he knew he was hobbled coming in a little bit, but – um, yeah, I guess those are some of my takeaways, um, like I mentioned. Uh, yeah, overall. And also, uh, was he not playing Johnny Smith? I didn't see him at all. Um, I don't know if he was an inactive or not, but he didn't catch a pass. So maybe maybe he was inactive. I, I really didn't pay attention to the Titans yeah. inactives. But, uh, but yeah, those are kind of my some of my takeaways, uh, yeah. positive. I guess I can mention, like, two more. And, you know, and I felt like yesterday a lot of the big plays that Tennessee made – it kind of felt like the same thing when, you know, we beat them in their place. You know, there were a bunch of big plays, you know, stuff that really shifted the tide, right? Like plays that if if one or two things different would have happened, then it could have changed the outcome of that drive and it could have shifted the momentum throughout the game, you know. And I felt like the Colts just didn't take advantage of those, which they normally do. And like you said, that defense – shocker of the year in the second half make great adjustments and then do a really good job in the second half only issue is you only stop them one time in the first half so kind of yeah. difficult to come back from that when your offense isn't doing that also and here's another thing that you know one thing we can take away from the negative and make it into a positive is that this team was without eight different starters in this game I mean you think about it long-term and you think we're going to get a lot of these guys back in the next week or two. So, you know, this season still has a potential to shift in our favor. I mean, we've obviously got destroyed by the Titans now, but you know, you, you take away from the fact that we had so many guys out, you know, that you're going to get them back soon. So that kind of uh, just gives you the understanding of this team when they're mainly healthy that this team can really do a lot of damage. We've seen it time and time again over the last couple of weeks that this team, when healthy and ready to go, this team can perform on a level that few other teams in the league really can. So I really think that's it, guys. I mean, it pretty much is just in a nutshell that we, we just really did not play up to expectations. I know the Colts know that, and they're going to have to come out this next week against – a hot Houston team right now. I mean, Deshaun Watson over the last couple of weeks has certainly been playing at a much higher level. St still the Houston Texans are, you know, they're still one of the worst teams in the league at stopping the run and they still have a lot of their own issues, but Deshaun Watson right now is playing at a great level and hopefully we can at least get Danico Autry back this next week and be able to, start applying a little bit more pressure off the edge because 
if we don't if we don't get a hold of Deshaun Watson, I assure you Deshaun Watson's not only putting up 215 yards like Ryan Tannehill did in this game. He's going to put up 350 if we don't get uh, any kind of pressure on him. So I'm sure I, – I have confidence that the that the Colts will bounce back. I'm sure they're going to look at all the film. They're going to figure it out. They're, they'll see their mistakes. I mean, if anything, Cody, I mean, this is a great wake-up call for them. You know, it gives them the chance to learn from these mistakes. And guys who maybe don't always get to play in that kind of situation, they got that experience now, so they know what they're doing going forward. I mean, that pretty much seems like a, a win out of a bad situation for me. Yeah, and I saw kind of Zach Hicks, who's our friend, who, you know, we talk about sometimes on this podcast. He kind of just mm-hmm. said, you know, obviously that that stunk, right? That that was a bummer of a game. But he said, you know, there's a lot of guys out in this game. Kind of throw that film out. And I ain't going to look at that film. Move on to the next game. Um, and I think that's fair. I really do, because there's a lot of guys out in this game, a lot of really important pieces for doing what the Colts were able to do this year so far. Uh, so I, I definitely think that that's something the Colts just need to do. They need to obviously look at the film and see what they, mistakes they made. But also, um, yeah, I mean, I think we can have a little bit of grace with them, um, more than we normally would. Like, especially like even week one against Jacksonville, we were just like, no, we are not going to hold back. That was an awful loss. Like, this loss hurts and it sucks and whatever else. But, like, there's a reason why. And we kind of could see it a little bit coming. Uh but, you know, fortunately, Frank Reich off the bye is really, really good. Um, his teams usually perform really, really well coming off of a loss. So uh, I, I'm really excited to see what they do. I think they're going to be mad. You could tell, like you said, Derek, they were frustrated, especially on defense, uh, just for the lack of execution. They were so frustrated in themselves. So mm-hmm. I expect this defense to come out and ball out against Houston. I really do. I feel like they, they, they feel a little bit disrespected. Uh, and they feel like, oh, people are writing this off now. Um, and I, I know Darius Leonard was pretty hot in his post-game preference, or preference, his conference, rather. Uh, and uh, I, I'm excited to see what they do, man. I really am. I, I hope that, uh, that this is definitely a wake-up call, like you said, because I think if, it, if, if they take it the right way, they can really come out and they can make a statement against Houston. And who knows, maybe uh, Tennessee loses to Cleveland, and you're right back in this division. I mean, it's, it's only one game. It happens. You still have a couple games. Uh, it's, right. The vision is still within reach, you know? Yeah, right. Like, I, I, that's the other thing that kind of just drove me up a wall yesterday is I told myself, don't check Twitter. Don't check Twitter. It's going to be the worst thing you can do. What do I do? I go on and I check Twitter. And sure enough, like, I see the comments. Colts out of the playoffs. Colts out of the playoffs. Bye-bye. No chance. Goodbye forever. It's like – My God, people, there are still five games left in this season. Chill out. There is a chance. There might not be a great chance, but we still got a chance because there's seven teams this year that get to go in. And if a few things go our way, and as long as we can win three or four out of the last five, then, I mean, we can can pull this off. It might be difficult because, I mean, the AFC is just so much better this year than what – people give it credit I mean I know I saw your tweet about somebody saying like questioning Frank Reich's AFC South record versus these teams and you were right Chuck Pagano had a much easier AFC South to run through not to mention the fact that he had Andrew Luck I'm sorry there's just a difference in the talent there so it wasn't coaching I assure you it was the talent that was put on the field amongst all those teams And the Colts had by far the best quarterback out of all of them. So that's why they majored the time won. It's funny because, like, the Colts only won that division two out of the five years. I believe it was five years they had Andrew Luck. So you think about those five years he was healthy or played most of the season uh, under Chuck Pagano. The Colts won the division twice. They lost to Tom Savage and the Houston Texans. I remember that. I was at that game with Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton in their prime. Like, if that tells you anything right there, like, come on, man. Like, don't yeah. – that's just such a weak argument. Like, come on. Yeah, it, it's not even worth it. It's not even worth talking about because, right, the, the difference in talent now is so much worse. I mean, you know, the what the Tennessee Titans are now, I mean, the Tennessee Titans are right now probably the best Tennessee Titans team that they've ever been. There's never been a better Tennessee Titans team than the one that they probably have right now. So, I mean, you know, things, 
things still could go our way. You know, Cleveland could beat Tennessee, and who knows? Maybe Cleveland drops a ball and loses like three or four out of their last five. Maybe the Ravens do the same. Maybe the Tennessee Titans do. Or maybe and the Dolphins don't decide to show up in the last five games. You know, I mean, things can happen. And, you know, with the way the Raiders looked yesterday, I mean, good Lord, who knows? Maybe they won't be in contention. Who no, Who knows? But there is still a good shot at getting to the playoffs. What kind of seeding we'll get, I don't know. Most likely not a very good one. But uh, we can still get a wild card spot. We still can get into the playoffs. It's just a matter of where we go from here. And like you said, there's a lot of time. If the Colts respond back from this, then which I believe they will also, this team can still make some uh, noise in the AFC. All right. Thank you guys again so much for tuning into this. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, Hopefully you guys can agree that this is just a game to learn from the mistakes and hopefully the anger is gone and we can just focus to the next game because Houston's certainly uh, right around the corner and they're going to be ready to take us on and ruin our season. So thank you guys again so much for tuning in. And as always, go Colts. Yeah.